What is up, Sleep Tribe? Welcome to a brand new episode of the Healthy Sleep Revolution podcast. I am your host, Dr. Magna Dasani. Is it just me or does anybody else ever have those days when you wake up, like despite what you think you've gotten enough sleep, but you wake up feeling like you're in a fog. You're just just struggling to shake off that sensation, that grogginess, that it almost feels like it's hanging over you like a cloud. You know what I mean? Um, If you do, then let me assure you, you're not alone. A lot of people experience this feeling upon waking up. And oftentimes it is attributed to something called as sleep inertia. Today, I want to touch briefly upon what sleep inertia is, why it happens, and tips to minimize that feeling and its effects. That way, we all can start our days each day feeling refreshed and energized. So sleep inertia is the term that is used to describe that feeling of grogginess. There's impaired cognitive function. Um, This typically occurs after waking from a nap or waking up in the morning after a night's sleep. It is that transitional period between being asleep and being fully awake. And it can last for as long as a few minutes to actually a few hours sometimes. The most common symptoms of sleep inertia um, could be the following. You know, we could have Slugginess, sluggishness, not slugginess, sluggishness, uh, slow reaction times, a strong, strong desire to go back to sleep, impaired visual attention. You feel like your eyes just can't focus. I can't get my eyes open, right? There's difficulty concentrating even after you've gotten out of bed, memory lapses, mood swings, and impaired decision making. Very important. Don't get behind the wheel if you feel like that. Why does this happen? Now, the exact cause of sleep inertia has not been fully understood, but of course, there is lots of research that's going on. So far, what we know, um, researchers have three common theories. The first one is that there is an increase in those slow delta waves in our brain. These, These delta waves are very common during deep sleep, right? We want those. That's what signals that our brain is in deep sleep. And a lot of times they become more active if you don't get enough sleep. So as a result, that sleep inertia may happen if your brain hasn't had a chance to slow down those delta waves before you wake up. So as you're getting into that stage of deep sleep, or if you wake up abruptly during deep sleep, if you're in that part of the sleep cycle, um, that could be one of the reasons. This is actually one of the reasons I like using apps that track um, the phases, the stages of sleep we are in and wakes you up accordingly. Um, One of the more common ones I should say that I use is the sleep cycle app. And there's no affiliation, but it's just that I use it so much. I am constantly talking about it to the patients and to the doctors that I uh, train as well. What that app does is it allows you to set your wake alarm within a time period. So about 30 minutes or so, it has a time frame. Say I want to wake up at five, it automatically will sense what part of what stage of sleep I am in, uh, in that 30 minute time period around my desired wake up time. And it'll wake me up when I'm in my lightest sleep. So wake ups aren't as hard. Just something to look into. I'm sure there's plenty other apps. This is the one that I have been using for a while and I really like it. Then the other reason could be uh, that researchers are saying is uh, it could be we have high adenosine levels. Adenosine is a compound that exists naturally in our brain and which affects our sleep. A higher adenosine level is what leads us to feeling sleepy and wanting to take a nap and go to bed. And when we wake up, those levels should be low. But if your brain hasn't had a chance to clear that out, you could still have high levels when you wake up. And that's when we tend to experience sleep inertia as well. Uh, The third reason that researchers are, um, our theory that researchers are proposing as to why this could have happened, this could happen is reduced blood flow to the brain. So as we go through the different sleep stages, the blood flow to the brain changes. It either increases or decreases. Now, chronic fatigue syndrome is a condition that has been shown uh, linked to reduced 
cerebral blood flow, reduced blood flow in the brain. And this causes people to feel tired and um, show symptoms that are similar to sleep inertia. That's why there's the speculation that reduced blood flow to the brain upon waking may lead to sleep inertia symptoms. And then some of the factors that I, I think that may increase the likelihood and the severity of sleep inertia. Sleep deprivation is one, right? Not getting enough sleep can make your sleep inertia worse because your body just really hasn't had a chance to go through the sleep cycles and uh, get that quality of sleep that your body needs. Um, sudden awakenings. If you are in a stage if, where you're in deep sleep and you are jolted awake by a loud noise or worse, an alarm clock, um, it could trigger more intense sleep inertia. Napping is another big culprit. Short naps are less likely to induce sleep inertia. But if you find yourself taking a longer nap in the middle of the day, you could it could leave you feeling more groggy. And then there's individual differences. You know, some people are naturally just more prone to this than others based on genetics, based on sleep patterns, what's going on with their bodies. So we can't entirely eliminate sleep inertia, right? But what we can do is we can try to minimize its impact. Just for one, making sure we are prioritizing sleep, making sure we're getting enough hours of sleep, good quality sleep. Make sure you're maintaining that consistent sleep schedule and aim to get at least seven to nine hours of sleep every night. Another trick that I strongly believe in is waking up gently, using um, alarms that kind of phase in to um, easing you into awake, into consciousness, rather than using loud jolting alarms that um, wake you up with your heart pounding, right? Um, a sunrise alarm that gradually increases your light exposure and uses gentle nature sounds is another cool trip that I've used with my kids. Um, and then I talked about that app. There's a smart alarms too that register what stage of sleep you are in and then will gently wake you up. If you are one that needs to nap, if you're tired, you've had a rough day or are just, you know, haven't been getting enough sleep, Take naps, but nap strategically. If you absolutely need to nap, keep them short, 20 to 30 minutes. Um, this is going to reduce the likelihood that you're going to fall into deep sleep. Establishing a good morning routine is so, so important. Creating a routine that involves uh, physical activity, making sure you're getting your walk in the morning, stretching in the morning, meditation, hydration, um, and a balanced breakfast, making sure we're getting enough protein, fat, carbohydrates, getting your macros in right, um, are super, super important in just allowing your body to get to where you need to get. Another key one is, and it sounds so counterintuitive for those that are groggy, but avoid caffeine immediately upon waking up. You know, a lot of people think that if I wake up and I need to wake up, I need coffee. But consuming caffeine right after you wake up could interfere with your body's natural wakefulness process. You know, the spike in cortisol. Try waiting 30 to 60 minutes before you reach for that cup of coffee. Try and get your morning routine and see if that helps. Then limiting nighttime screen time is... Um, a big one, right? Limiting exposure to blue light is important. That blue light that is emitted by our screens can and does disrupt our sleep cycles, disrupt release of melatonin in our brain. And this could potentially be exacerbating sleep inertia the following morning. So feeling groggy when we wake up is a common experience. And a lot of times it could be due to sleep inertia. I think the key is understanding why it's happening and what you can do to impact um, its effect and implementing those strategies. This, this could help us start our day feeling more fresh, uh, ready to take on the world. You're more alert. You're on top of your game. So prioritizing good sleep hygiene and I think adopting those gentle wake up routines. I think that's a big one in my book can go a long way in helping combat this morning grogginess. I hope this gives you some insight into how you can wake up feeling refreshed and starting your day off right. If this resonates with you, let me know. If you know somebody that could benefit from this, hit that share button. As always, like, follow, and I will see you next time.